Hi, Don Garbutt here from New Frontiers Audio. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you the signal flow options in Spectrum Synth. To start with, we're going to look at the Wavetable section. The Wavetable section has its own dedicated filters, high pass, low pass, and band pass. The three filters share the same cutoff point and resonance controls. In this example, I'm going to start with the low pass and mix in a little bit of the band pass. The output of the signal from the wavetable section through the filters shows up at the filter mixer with a mute button below. The next signal option is that the wavetable section is routed through a comb filter. With the comb signal in the mixer, we should be able to hear the comb filter on the wavetable sound. The comb filter cutoff point and resonance controls are here, along with some controls for incoming modulation and a saturation amount. You can also balance the dry and comb filter signal here. This is useful when sending the output of the comb filter to another filter down the line. The wave filters, the comb filter, and the rest of the filter outputs each have their own pan controls. The pan controls are modulatable, so you'll hear in this example the wave signal going from left to right, while the comb filter signal is going from right to left. I'm going to save the modulation discussion for another video. The wavetable section has its own two dedicated envelope generators, but the comb filter signal has to be controlled either by an envelope chosen from the envelope generator stack here, or from the auxiliary envelope found on the B panel. Again, more about that in another tutorial. The third filter in the filter output mixer is the multi-mode filter. The multi-mode filter receives its signal from the wavetable section. It can also receive signals that have been sent through the solo filters. The multi-mode filter also requires an envelope generator to control its output volume. As I mentioned earlier, it has its own pan control, which is modulatable. The wavetable section routing through the comb filter can also be sent on to the solo filters. Here we have two independent filters, the solo filters. So this fader will send the wavetable signal through the comb filter. With this fader, we can control a blend of the comb filtered signal with the dry wavetable signal. And that signal arrives at the solo filters. Again, there are envelope generators involved because what we have to do is we have to have the output of the comb filter controlled with an envelope generator to get the signal to proceed onwards. But once that signal arrives here, we can hear the comb filtered signal being processed by a further filter in this section. <laughs> If we want this signal to go to both the solo filters, then we can adjust that signal here. So basically this is the filter target submixer. This small mixer allows us to send the sub oscillator, oscillators 1 and 2, and the comb filtered signal that we've just been talking about, to two different target filters depending on the position of these controls, filter 1 and filter 2. So having the capability of going to either filter 1 or filter 2 controlled here, we also have the control here that allows us to change to a serial mode in which filter 1 roots into filter 2. The final option in this filter chain story is that the wavetable signal running through the comb filter, proceeding on to the solo filters, can also show up down into the multi-mode filter with this control here. This controls the volume of the signal input from solo filters 1 and 2. This fader lets you balance the incoming signals from solo filters 1 and 2, and this allows the output of the solo filters to be further filtered by the multi-mode filter. Up until now, I've been talking about the signal that emanates from the wavetable section. Now we're switching to the grain synth. There are three dedicated envelope generators for control of volume, filter, and panning. 
There's also the option to control these parameters from envelopes chosen from the envelope generator pool. With plenty of nice filter types available here, the stereo signal routes down into the filter mixer. As far as options for the grain synth signal, the output of the grain filter can be routed into the solo filters by transmitting with this level and also having controls at the input of the filter here for the signal strength. These controls are included so that this can control the stereo signal level to both filters, or if it was a mono sound source, you could have it go to one particular filter and not have to have it go to the second filter. In addition to the grain signal through the grain filter coming into the solo filters, you also have the option of sending the grain signal dry directly to the solo filters. That would be done by choosing whether it's a mono or stereo sound source, choosing the signal amount, and choosing the target filter by this control here. In this example, we'll hear the grain filter, and then as I raise this fader up, you'll hear the signal from the grain filter going to the two solo filters, which have been set to pan hard left and right so that we can get the stereo image output surviving in the output of these two filters. In the case of this sound, which is a stereo sound source, if I turn off the grain signal output from the grain filter and bring up the signal here, you can hear the signal coming directly from the grain synth into the two filters. In stereo mode, the filter target selector is disabled because we need both filters to process the left and the right sounds of the stereo. I know that sounded like panning, but that's because filter 1 is panned hard left and filter 2 is panned hard right. So far I've talked about the wavetable signal and the grain synthesis signal. The next two sound sources I'd like to talk about are the two solo oscillators. Waveforms are chosen here, and the volume of the solo oscillator has to be controlled by an envelope generator. That assignment is done by choosing an envelope generator and assigning it to the appropriate target. In this case, solo oscillator 1 volume. I'll talk about all the envelope generator assignments in another tutorial. The solo oscillators are sent to the two solo filters. The filter target mixer allows us to select the filter target for each of the solo oscillators, and also the sync oscillator. To activate solo oscillator 2, we'll need another envelope generator. We could use the same one and choose the appropriate target. And of course, solo oscillator 2 can go to a different filter if you choose. There's a third oscillator which is used for oscillator sync and can be used as a sub oscillator. It's called the sync oscillator. Its volume also has to be controlled by an envelope generator parameters of the sync oscillator are set here. Its filter target is also chosen here. The final section to discuss is the noise generator section. Although noise is available in the solo oscillators, it's nice to have an independent noise section which can be mixed in along with the other sounds. The noise generator itself is found on the B panel where you can adjust the noise color, and that signal is sent through a specific filter here. The output of that filter is controlled by an envelope generator, so it has to be made in an assignment in Grand Central Station. The choice of filter and the tuning of the filter and the keyboard control of the cutoff point of the filter enables the noise generator to produce some nice tonal components. Its volume is controlled in the mixer here. In terms of effects, the wavetable section has its own chorus unit. The granular synthesis section often needs a little tweak in the high end, so it's got a dedicated parametric EQ here. The total output of the filter output mixer goes through a chorus unit. And the final signal is sent through a series connected delay processor and reverb processor. In other tutorials, I'll be talking about modulation routing, the animator pad, using FM synthesis, filter FM, and those sorts of things. Thanks for watching. Yeah.